listening to The Quad, a Killjoys podcast. My name is Chris, and we are talking about the eighth episode of Killjoys Season 5, Don't Stop Be Weaving. While we will talk about anything and everything from that episode, there won't be any spoilers for future episodes. And we're doing something a little different this week. Our schedules just would not line up this week. So basically, we're just giving our quick reviews, and that's going to be it. We wanted to release something still. We're so close to the end, and it's very sad, but also exciting. But yeah, schedules just weren't working out. So here, have some quick reviews. Hey, y'all, it's Stephanie. So I feel like I have mixed feelings about this week's episode. It definitely did not have the same oomph to it as the past several have had for me. And I feel like it's one of those episodes where I kind of need to see what's going to happen next before I fully decide on it. But as it is, I don't know that I feel like this was the best use of one of the last few remaining episodes of the series. As much as I loved Zeph and I love seeing Zeph and Dutch bond, I don't know that seeing, having her go back to where she grew up, I don't know that that necessarily taught me anything new about Zeff that I didn't really know before, and it felt a little bit like a retread of things we have seen before on Killjoys. So, I mean, it was fine. I didn't really have anything against it, but I didn't, it didn't exactly grab me the way that previous storylines have had, have this season. I, I didn't mind the capture the flag storyline on the ship, though I kind of wish, this is one episode where I, I really wish there had been a little bit more forward momentum in, in regards to the larger plot that we do have, you know, Johnny and, and Davin training the prisoners to be part of their army with the capture the flag thing. And you have kind of the parallels, I think, between the psychiatrist and Zephyr's original community with maybe having Feel, people feeling like they have noble intentions, but really poorly treating or in the psychiatrist cases, picking off people who, who they feel like do not fit the mold of what a good society should look like. You also had a really strong theme of like the double edged sword of family in this episode, which I will say that all three of the storylines, including Klein, really hit on well this idea that found family can be a real strength. Uh, but other people who we can consider family who might be blood family or found family can really be a, a weakness that people can use against you or they can manipulate you in such a way. I am very intrigued to see where this is going to go with Klein and the ladies relationship now that Klein is human, now that he feels like he has lost his daughters, will whatever this weird little connection that he has developed with the lady, will that be somehow become more important to him than the connection and the love that he felt for Dutch and Anila? So I think there's some interesting stuff to build on here, but when the episode was, it was over, I was a little like, eh, that was okay. So, but something I absolutely loved, love, 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 besides again, Rachel Anshrell, and her vest and shirt and looking oh so amazing was the Jacoby brothers stuff, their brotherly relationship, especially that closing scene. But Davin like trying to be Johnny's wingman and try to investigate these two little frissons of, of potential romantic, romantic potential, I guess, between both the warden and Calvert. I thought that was really sweet. And then that, just that ending scene with them talking and kind of giving each other a hard time was, was really nice. So there was some good stuff in this episode that I did enjoy, but on the whole, I would say it didn't really do it for me. Hey, this is Annie. And these are my thoughts on Killjoys season five, episode eight. Don't stop be weaving. And now I'll never get journey out of my head. Um, first off, the episode brilliantly opens with more Johnny and Lucy. Yes, Juicy lives on forever. I love how in sci-fi no one ever dies, and this includes awesome AI ships. So, so happy to see Johnny jauntily skipping down Lucy's corridors in his Captain Apex pajamas. I read that production made those especially for Aaron Ashmore. So... Please, please, as much Lucy as we can get in the remaining two episodes, that would be awesome. One thing I really like about Killjoys is how it takes time to develop all the supporting characters' backstories, so I really enjoyed seeing Zeph's backstory this week. 
um, and seeing about her culty origins. Although it was interesting how the cult leader said she was going to give Zeph, uh, she eventually wanted her to take charge, which I guess proves that the smart ones always win. But um, I really liked that moment between Zeph and Dutch at the ending when Zeph referred to Dutch as her older sister and then asked Dutch about Anila, and you get the feeling that uh, Dutch has come a long way in thinking of, of Anila as her sister. So I like that bit. And then there was the prison storyline with the brothers setting up the game of tag or capture the flag with the prisoners. And as I suspected in earlier episodes, it's not going to be quite that easy to convert a prison to an army of warriors to fight the lady. Uh, there's going to be some complications along the way. So the fact that the doctor tried to sabotage everything wasn't quite a surprise. I am still happy to see Ward and Renica, though. And, uh, because, hmm, hot Warden Renica outfits, just can't get enough of them. And it was interesting to see Klein's relationship with the lady develop in this episode. Is he really thinking of her as a daughter figure now that he thinks that Dutch is gone? I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where this goes. But all in all, pretty good setup to the last two episodes, only two episodes left. And, uh, yeah, can't wait to see what happens. Thanks. And as a surprise to no one, I also really enjoyed this episode. I, I do agree with Stephanie that it felt perhaps less necessary to have Zeph's background episode, but at the same time, it's kind of nice because, you know, Zeph is part of the team. She's one of the core members of the team now, and we haven't really gotten an episode about her family and her upbringing and her backstory. So it's just, it's nice to do it and to tie it into the fact that she is part of the team with, you know, the sisterly relationship with Dutch. And it's just, it was nice. And, you know, hanging out in the the Rambler and drinking as the Killjoys often do. It was just, it was really sweet. And I also enjoyed Davin wingmanning for Johnny very poorly, but still he tried. I'm also amused that Davin seems to have had the same thoughts that we had in our episode last week, where we're just kind of like, is there something going on with, with Renica and Johnny? Is there something going on with Calvert and Johnny? Maybe. And, you know, Davin just making it awkward all around. I love him so much. I did also think it was really interesting that Klein is having this sort of weird, complicated relationship with the lady which apparently the lady was trying to model after Klein's relationship with Dutch, which is all sorts of twisted because their relationship has been pretty twisted the whole time. So I don't know. I don't know where this is going. And that is intriguing to me. Is it that Klein is accepting the lady's offer of a familial relationship in the vein of what he had that he th- seems to think he'd lost with Dutch and Anila or is it Klein doing his usual Klein thing and playing the long game and is this also part of the whole thing with Turin saying you know get close and then I forget exactly what Turin said but you know I also enjoyed that scene by the way Klein and Turin's shared protectiveness of Dutch this season's been really good, and I'm sad it's almost over, but I'm just, I'm, I'm enjoying the ride. Obviously. We'd love to hear your thoughts about this episode of Killjoys. You can send them to killjoys at askgenretv.com. We love getting voice messages, which you can send us in a couple of ways. Record a voice memo on your smartphone and email it to us, or call our listener voicemail line at 972-514-7223. Follow us on Twitter or Tumblr at Killjoys Podcast. The Quad is part of the Ask Genre TV family of podcasts. To find our other podcasts about Lost Girl, Orphan Black, and other shows, visit our website, askgenretv.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the quad. Quad. <laughs>